Okay, today we're going to take a little look at Blue Star Linux, which is a Arch-based distribution that uses KDE as its desktop environment with a few customizations out of the box. So it doesn't look like your typical KDE environment straight away. There's even a bar there that's set to auto hide. Before we have a look around, I'm just going to show you how we set up the disks. So the installation process was fairly sort of typical of what you'd expect from an Arch-based distribution. It uses Calamari's as its installer. Mm -hmm. It does have a couple of additional options built into it though for like version of sort of the distribution. So there's like a basic, there's a desk pro, there's a developer edition. This is the basic. And then it also lets you choose whether you want to swap partition or not um, with it being large enough to enable swap, um, hibernate. We've gone for swap with no hibernate. So this is the way it sets up your disk. You have an EFI, you have a swap of about 9.4 there it says. And then the rest is all on root. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's have a little look around. So we have a Latte dock at the bottom, at least I think that's Latte. Let's have a look. Desktop settings. There we go. So this is Latte dock. We'll go through that sort of the way they've set that up in a moment. And then at the top, you have a normal KDE panel. As you can see, it's just a standard KDE panel. And it's set to auto hide. So let's get out of that. So then when you're not on it, it won't appear. And then if you scroll your mouse over it, it will then appear. We have a drop down for our status and notifications. We've got our sound and sort of system indicators here. Is that a clipboard as well? It is indeed. And then we have some sort of, okay, we have a system load monitor which tells you sort of what resources are being used at the time that you check it. What's this? <laughs> That's quite cool. So you have a little like um, pop down calculator. I don't mind that to be honest. And then your clock's to the left instead of typically to the right. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Here is our application launcher. So we have some little quick launchers down there for system settings, Dolphin and Kate. And then there's quite a few applications actually. We'll have a little look at exactly what it comes installed with in a moment though. So let's see how this dock's all set up. Then let's go into dock settings and go into advanced. Let's bring that down a bit. And let's also bring that one down. Okay, so it's centered, but then it's aligned all the way to the edges of the screen. And there is a zoom on hover, so like a magnifying effect when you scroll over it. So if you have a look, when you go over it with the mouse, it will then enlarge the icon. The only problem with the way they've set this up, if you watch the trash can here, it will then sort of disappear slightly off screen. And the same goes for the show desktop button. So for that very reason, I think it's probably best if we just take off zoom to hover entirely so where's that zoom on hover if we bring that all the way down there will be no zoom effect now and then all your icons will just stay on the screen let's go back into dock settings go into appearance now and let's make it a little bit different so i don't mind it going to edge to edge that's fine but i would like a little bit of a background shadow so if we scroll down a little bit so here's background let's bring that up to 95 and see how that looks and let's bring the shadow down to like 60, uh, the opacity, sorry. Yeah, I think that's okay. I think we might want to make it a bit larger because these icons are quite big, aren't they? So let's make it a bit larger, um, the background that is. Let's try it at full 100. Um, okay, so the icons are always just going to be quite sort of edge to edge like that. Okay, that's fine. Right, so we also have our trash can there. We have a power on and off button or just a leave button. So clicking that will then bring up that where you can log out and restart and hibernate. We can't hibernate though because we don't have a large enough swap. But the option was there for us. So here's our pinned application. So they all appear in the middle there. Then we have our workspace switch up, which is set in a four way grid. So you'll go left to right and up to down. So there's left, right, up, down. Personally, I'll prefer just to stick with one, either left to right or up to down. Preferably I'll just do left to right though and we have a show desktop button as well We have a couple of desktop widgets there. So we've got one for the weather Which appears to be for Germany. Obviously, I'm not German So we'll probably just remove that in a moment or we'll leave we'll leave it on the desktop But we'll set the position for it in a moment. Let's just move it to the top right So then we have a disk usage monitor thing here So if you click that it'll tell you how much of your disk is being used in the percentage there and then we have our home folder, basically just shortcuts on the desktop, which is all one widget. So if you hold that, you can see that it's just a one widget. And it will be a single click. It is indeed. And then that will open up the sort of folder that it corresponds to. And it will open it up in your default file manager, which is, as we're on KDE, will be Dolphin. So let's get out of that. So applications wise, we have, I won't go through everything. I'll just sort of point out things that were, that are worth pointing out. 
So in games you have K Patience, graphics you have GIMP, which is nice to see, open in RAW Editor, Ocular, K Photo, Gwen View for your photos, XDVI, Show Photo, what's this? I've not used this before. Show Photo, what is this then? Okay, is this some sort of image editor of some, some, some kind? Yeah, it appears to be. Okay, interesting. I'll have a look at that someday and see what that's all about. So now in internet we have FileZilla out of the box, that's an interesting inclusion there. Obviously an F FTP or SFTP client there to manage, you know, as I just said, like FTP spaces and things like that for your web server, etc. We have KDE Connect out of the box, we have KGET, the download manager, Conqueror, which is another web browser, so you have Firefox and Conqueror. Compete, you have KTorrent, KRDC, the uh, remote desktop client, KRFB, Thunderbird is for your mail, has Skype out of the box, and it also has Pigeon. Is this the proper desktop Skype? It appears to be, I don't use Skype at all really, so I couldn't tell you. I can see a bit of screen tearing actually, out of the box there. Right, let's keep it moving. So that was internet, multimedia, we have Amarok, which is a music player, but we also have Elisa, which is a music player, and Juck, which is a music player. Okay, they've gone a bit ham on the music players here, haven't they? So there's Amarok. Um, so Amarok was one of the first ever music players I ever really used when I first got into Linux. It's been going for quite a while, Amarok. At the moment, I tend to just use Elisa, which we did just also see on there. So let's open up Elisa. There you go, so there's one music player, there's two music players. Let's open up the third one now just to get the trifecta. Multimedia and where was the other one? Juck. So, yeah, there's quite a bit of bloat on this distribution. I don't think we quite need three music players out of the box, do we? Let's get out of that. Yep, go away, go away, and go away. So it'd be your choice of which one to choose out of all of them. I'd probably just choose Elisa if it was for me to keep this distribution, but... So that was multimedia. We also have Caden Live out of the box, which is nice to see. Anything else that I want to take a look at? No. As this is Arch as well, it'll all be the latest packages. Caden Live will be like 20.04.2 now. I didn't know it had gone up a point. The last time I checked it was 20.04.1. I'm not a massive fan of the theming, actually. We'll have a look at the global theming in a moment as well. So that was in multimedia. Office-wise, okay, so it's got Open Office, which is quite... I don't actually, I don't keep up to date with OpenOffice, I didn't know it was still actually a thing. So most most people these days will just use Libra, which sort of spawned from OpenOffice. Okay, so it's going to look very dated compared to LibreOffice, let's have a look. Is it good? Have we just cancelled the whole thing? Let's open it back up again, I want to see what it looks like. So there's Writer. We'll just go for Next, Finish. There we go, super old school looking, not my favourite kind of look. It's got spell check out of the box though. There we go. Let's discard that. So that was version, that was um, Open Office version 4.17 or something. Is there anything else in there I want to take a look at? So you'll get a full Office suite of Open Office, but as I said, it's quite dated these days. I don't even know if it still gets updates. It probably does. Ice T, Web Control Panel, System Settings, uh, Grub Customizer. So if you've got more than one distribution using Grub on here, you can sort of. It's not picked up the other one, hold on. It should pick up Arch as well. There we go. So we could change the order of the bootloader and maybe remove it if you really wanted to, but we won't touch anything. And we will quit without an update. We don't need to update Grub. So that was in, was that settings? That was indeed settings. So in system now you have a lot of sort of KDE settings and things, and you also have Octopi to manage packages. Okay, interesting. So this is a GUI that you can manage your packages in. So say if you wanted to install something like, let's go for a third music player, shall we? What's the name? Um, no, we won't go for another music player. There you go. If you wanted to go for another music player, you can just grab it like that, so then you can get four. Why have three when you can have four, eh? Right, let's keep going. So that's um, utility. Anything I want to have a look at in here? So we have known disks as well, which we had a brief look at when we first started up to show you how the disks have been partitioned. Fairly standard disk manager, GNOME disks, I use it a lot. K is your text editor, also has K write. Spectacle, so let's see if that's all binded properly. No, <laughs> so um, hitting the print screen has then sort of took us to K snapshot and then to Verge. <laughs> okay, they probably need to rebind the um, keyboard bindings instead of K snapshot to Spectacle. 
fair enough. <laughs> um, anything else I want to take a look at here? K floppy. Um, no, I think I'm all good for the rest. Right, let's go into the um, global theming and take a look at some stuff there. So in the installer, it gave you the option to change some of the theming before you boot it up. But we went for the default here, which is BSLX Fractal. But then as you can see, you get a few other options here. So let's see what it looks like with something else. Let's click apply. Okay, nothing really appears to have changed, but I think it would have changed the login screen. So let's log in and log out and see if that is the case. So let's go to log out. Oh God, that's quite an old looking SSDM, isn't it? <laughs> so it's just SSDM, so you can theme it and stuff. We'll, we'll theme it in a moment with a nicer looking theme because it all looks very sort of old school, doesn't it? There you go, so you get a different loading screen there for KDE, but I think the theming is very much the same. Okay, it's opened up Skype again, and we've got a resolution change. No, we haven't. The resolution's the same. Okay, so what you'd want to do if you didn't want your programs to keep starting up is if you just go into System Settings and then jump into the um, Desktop Settings. Uh, where are we? No, Start Up and Shut Down, sorry. And then go to Desktop Session, and then just go to Start Up. Oh, it is on Start of an Empty Session. Perhaps Skype is on the Start Up. Let's have a look. There you go, so Skype is on the auto start as well as Latte. We'll leave Latte there, we'll take Skype off. Right, so we want to change the theming a bit because I'm not a massive fan of this theme to be honest. It looks like, um, you know what it looks like when you've got a theme applied and then you use a red light to change the colour temperature of your screen? It looks a little bit like that. The colours look a little bit washed out to me. So let's go and get a new theme. Right, we're going to go into the global theme package and just grab the lay in theme. Ah, oh, that's right there, there we go. Right, that's going to install that. We're also going to have to get Cavantum because we're going to want the Cavantum theme. So I'm just going to jump into Firefox quickly and grab the Cavantum theme package while it's grabbing that. Uh, what is it called? Lay in Cavantum Pling. Ah, no. Yes, I know. Right, let's grab the Cavantum theme for that theme we're just downloading. This is the one we want. Download. And we're just going to extract that straight to our downloads folder. Let's go to downloads. And we're just going to extract it in there and then we'll open it up in Cavantum to apply it. Okay, cool. I wonder what icons these are. I've not, I'm not too familiar with them. Let's uh, close these tabs a moment. So is that installed? That has installed so we can now apply that that'll also change the sort of loading screen and stuff when we log in there is definitely some screen tearing there isn't there right also let's get rid of some of these desktop widgets i'm not a massive widget guy so let's get rid of that let's get rid of that and now let's go and install Cavantum. okay here's our console it has i think that's like an ASCII asci thingy let's um let's open our bash rc a moment do we have vim installed we'll soon find out Okay, the keyboard's not been set correctly, so let's jump into system settings before we do anything else. I'm gonna have to change our layout on our keyboard. So let's go to language, keyboard, layouts. So it's got US by default, obviously I don't use a US, we're in the UK, so let's add the UK one. Let's look for English, let's just type EN, there we go. And we want layout just to be English UK. Apply. Right, let's check out our bash RC file quickly. So that is what's loading every time we open up our terminal. And then there's a, no extra really aliases there at all. It's quite an empty bash RC to be fair. Let's get out of that. Right, what we're going to do is install Cavantum and HTOP unless it's already got it. It does already have it. So we are currently using 1.4 gig it's quite high considering we haven't really got anything open there's our swap there of 8.8 .8, so it says 8.8 .8 in um, htop let's grab cavantum qt5 and then what we're going to do is we're going to install the lay theme for cavantum okay so let's open up cavantum now already i prefer the color scheme though if let's just open up dolphin to show you what it looks like there you go, much nicer colour scheme than the default, personally. So what we want to do now is just navigate to that folder where we downloaded Layum, install this theme, and then go to change slash delete, and it will be right at the bottom. There we go. Cool. 
everything should look a little bit better now hasn't changed the theme there for open office there's probably not an um an icon for open office in the lay and stuff to be fair <laughs> okay so workspace switching do we have any keyboard shortcuts doesn't look like it let's go into system settings once more and then go into the keyboard shortcuts and see what the defaults are for switching these workspaces as you can see we're using arch linux kde the very latest of 5.19.1 let's go into oh we've gone into the wrong thing haven't we let's go home or let's not <laughs> right system settings baby that's what we want right we want to go into global shortcuts global shortcuts and let's see what they have got the default shortcut set as so where is kwin there it is let's just full screen that for a moment okay so it appears not a lot of screen uh, shortcuts have been set at all apart from the incorrect one for k snapshot it appeared right okay what we want to do is go for switch one desktop down left right and up we're going to do all of these because as i said it's got the um the whole workspace grid there so we're going to go left right down and up so for down we're just going to do a very simple control and down reassign yes 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 and then for left we'll do the same but using the left key yep and then to the right again very same but just the right key and finally up yes right let's apply that okay dolphins not disappearing there you go now it has right let's see how that all looks now there you go might make you a bit nauseous that to be fair yeah, I much prefer just having a work uh, desktop in sort of one direction. Up and down just seems a bit like overkill to me, to be honest with you. Okay, cool. Right, I think we've looked at what I want to really look at for the most part. Up and There is definitely some screen tearing out of the box there, isn't there? So you might want to mess around with your Xorg file to get rid of that screen tearing. Okay, I'm going to imagine we will have four-way split as we're using kde yep so four-way desktop split out of the box what i'm going to do is do a reboot and see how much ram we're using at boot and then we're just going to wrap it up there to be fair first impressions wise i don't mind this way of setting up kde it's definitely an acquired taste though i don't know if i would quite set this up myself to be fair but i can understand the attraction it does look quite nice i like the alternative menu here as well as opposed to the standard Okay, what we're going to do is do a restart, but I'm going to record the restart to see just how long it takes to boot up. So let's go for restart. Um, obviously, we'll have to go to the grub screen as well because we do have Arch Linux installed on this desktop as well. So we'll have to just very quickly hit enter. And uh, the loading screen will be different now. Blue screen on my monitor there. I looked a bit like the um, beast out of X-Men or something then. Okay, we should be back in business in a few seconds. Well, I say that, it might take forever. Right, Blue Star Linux. It's got potential though. I do think there's far too many applications installed out of the box. Like I said, no one needs free music players, for example. There we go, so the loading screen's now using the theme from Layen. And it's auto-login. And we keep getting this dialogue about the changing of the... Um, resolution but as far as i can tell we haven't changed the resolution once all right let's open up the terminal go into htop oh hey up okay so straight away we're using 860 megabytes ram so it's not the lightest implementation of kde by quite a long shot but then i wouldn't have expected it to be with latte starting up and all these additional programs here there is a lot out of the box isn't there I think if I was to ever use this, I'd have to really whittle it down and take a lot of packages away. We also have um, VLC as well as Dragon Player, but yeah, you might want to just take one of them away unless it sort of depends on Caden Live. I don't think it does though. Um, anything else interesting that I want to take a look at before we wrap it up? No. Okay, cool. That was um, Blue Star Linux. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and also join the Discord. There'll be a link in the description below. And you can also watch all these videos on library as well. And there'll also be a link in the description below. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Bye bye.